Hey everyone, it's Paul from Alexandria Knife Sharpen and Laser Engraving. So back when I first started getting into laser engraving a few years ago, it was kind of the beginning of enclosed lasers and the open gantry style lasers were kind of, I don't want to say on their way out, but not quite as popular as the enclosed lasers like you see in my shop to the right of me. But a very smart person once told me, they said, Paul, don't get rid of all of your gantry lasers. You want to keep at least one around because you never know when you're going to get something that's just way too big to fit in your enclosed lasers. And an open gantry is nice because you can take it and you can place it over top of the material and even move it to different spots if you had to do something really big, like let's say a giant piece of plywood, or you needed to do really big giant letters on something. So I've always kept my one open gantry that I've owned, which is this Creality Falcon 2, which is a fantastic 22 watt laser, does beautiful jobs on engraving wood, and that's why I've always kept it around. So I have it, and this is a possibility of something I just might pull out. So I keep it over here on the wall and I'm going to show you what I got in and I'm trying to decide how I'm going to do it. Cause I have two ways that I could go with this. I could go with my old open gantry or I could use my X tool enclosed lasers with an accessory that they have called a pass through. So let me show you the monster cutting board I have here. So normally when I do cutting boards, they're great because I can fit them entirely in my machine. But this cutting board is so wide, it won't fit in. It's wider than the opening on the machine. Lengthwise isn't a pro. Well, actually, I guess I should say the width is the width is fine unless I want to put it in horizontally like this, which is how I would like to put it in to set things up, but it's just too big. It's not going to fit, but I can put it in in this way and then use a pass through is a possibility. Now, when I purchased my S1, I actually did buy the pass through. I've never used it. That's my only concern is that I've never used the pass through and I don't know what it's going to do. And I don't want to ruin this cutting board. But fortunately, I got plenty of things I can test on. I got the two options here. I could go old school, set up my Creality Falcon 2 on the floor, throw my enclosure in over it. And this cutting board's so wide, it's actually bigger than the enclosure. So I don't even know if the enclosure would even help all that much. Not super concerned about that. I can open up the garage doors. We're getting nicer weather. Today ha actually happens to be cold, but it's been pretty beautiful here lately. I can open them up, put a fan in here and kind of blow any smoke out. I'm not really concerned about that. I'm just concerned about getting it right. But I also figured maybe it's time to actually use the pass-through and see how it is. I bought it. I bought it to go with the machine and it's been sitting in a box for a couple years. So I think it's time that, you know, maybe we should pull it out and at least take a look at it. I don't see a ton of people using them. And I think the one reason is just, you need a good bit of space if you're gonna use it. I have the space. Let's see, I haven't decided exactly what I'm gonna do. This is the project, we'll see what happens. All right, so I guess first thing, should open the box, right? And it's pretty funny, cause it's not like me to let things sit around or sit in a box for a really long time. But when it's come to my lasers, there's actually a few things that are still boxed up. The other one I have is the conveyor belt. I have never bothered to set that up either. Definitely have a few things around that still just haven't been used yet. So this ended up being a really interesting project. It was one of those times where you just keep running into issues. And I wanted to talk about that as I filmed all of this but I just ran into problem after problem after problem, and then something went wrong and I had to fix it. And it's one of the reasons it took so long for this to come out is because every plan that I kind of had in place for how I was going to do this project ended up not working out. 
So the first thing you're seeing here is I'm putting together the pass through for the S1, which I had never used before. And just setting this pass through up took a good hour. Then I found out that my table that I had it on was barely even big enough to have the pass through on there. You need a really good size table. And I ended up having to turn the laser sideways. But if that wasn't bad enough, so I get it all set up. I test it on a small piece of three millimeter plywood. I go grab the cutting board only to find out that the pass through has a limit on the thickness of the material that it will take. And this cutting board is really quite big, or I guess I should say quite thick. It was probably close to two inches thick. And it wasn't anywhere even close to going to fit through this pass through. So I set this entire thing up, tested it, and then had to break it all down because I couldn't use the pass through. But I still looked at it as a good lesson learned. I know that the pass through works, it would work well. But I also now know that it has a limitation on the width of the material that's going to go into it. So as much as I love my X Tool S1, it really wasn't going to be the tool I was going to be able to use for the job. So I had to go to my Creality Falcon 2, set that back up. I decided to just put it right on the floor and work right on the floor. So the next issue I ran into was somehow... I lost my setting for acacia wood using the Creality Falcon 2. Even though I had done plenty of acacia wood cutting boards, I couldn't find my setting. So I decided to use a small acacia cutting board that I had and just engrave that just to make sure I was happy with the settings. And it also was going to give me a chance to check the artwork that I made for this cutting board and that's what you see going on here this is just a test cutting board much smaller version of the similar graphics that i was going to use on the large cutting board but i decided to do a test one and my wife actually thought the uh, graphics and saying were kind of cute so i decided to make one for her the uh, cutting board for the client was getting the client's name on it with the same saying i just made this one a much more uh, generic one. So I had a nice long vent hose from this tent from before. I coupled that into my normal venting for my S1s and just ran the smoke out of the shop. The small cutting board finished. I was pretty happy with the results. I wanted the shark a little bit deeper, so I made some minor adjustments in the software so that the shark would burn a little bit darker and deeper into the larger cutting board and we got started and underway with that job and i thought i was in the clear but i ran into another problem so i set the large cutting board up under my tent i had to prop the tent up on some little blocks to get it above the cutting board because the cutting board was going to be hitting it but i was able to get good suction from the smoke extractor fans in my shop I double, triple, and probably quadruple checked the location of the engravings on this big board. That's what you see the laser doing now. It's outlining for me where the engraving is going to be. I was happy with everything, and I set the laser to get going and got started. I went over. Here's a quick look at the design. I added the client's name in, and we were all set to go. I grabbed a pair of safety goggles because of the tent being raised up and not flat on the ground. I was sure there would be some blue light coming out. And I even put a little thing here to block the bottom because my dog was there and I didn't want the blue light hitting him in the eyes because it's not good for you. So always think about your safety precautions in your shop. And we got underway. I set my phone up on top of the enclosure to do a time lapse because this was going to take a while. And I thought it would be cool to record all of it, and I did. And then I ran into yet another problem. As everything was almost done, bang, my machine stopped. 
and it wasn't completed. And you can see we're missing some letters and words. Okay, so let me show you my little bit of a disaster that happened, but we are underway fixing it. I do not know what happened, but this thing stopped engraving in the middle of everything. And then it was not in proper alignment when I got it back together. So I actually had to sand a bunch of the things down on this board. So you can see it's looking really beautiful again. But yeah, I had to spend a bunch of time sanding because it completely messed up when it got to her name up top and the word board it started printing it twice i have no idea why it did it hopefully it doesn't screw up like that again because i would absolutely despise having to sand this thing down a second time it took a lot of sanding fortunately i have a really very good sander over here so you can see i have my uh 3m extract which is they're the greatest they extract the dust while you're sanding and i have my milwaukee finishing sander there and i was able to remove the engraving so what i'm doing now is i'm lining up these words so that i can line up the few pieces that were missing to put them in here so i have to add the words amanda's shark we have cootery and we need to add board under charcuterie. So we're really close, but that's what's going on here. So far, so good. I'm happy to report. We seem to have been able to make the correction. I'm still keeping my fingers crossed though. So we have to put the word shark in and then we just have to do the name of the person who's getting the board, which is Amanda, is going to go in over top of the shark. Man, I really wish I knew why that failed the first time. I don't know what happened there. I have never had that happen with this machine. I have done a lot of cutting boards on here. So one of the things with laser engraving, I think you have to embrace the little bit of nervousness there is there. You got to kind of like having your heart in your mouth sometimes. And I would also say you need to embrace problem solving and enjoy looking for solutions to fixing things that go wrong. Because as you can see, things do go wrong. Mistakes happen, equipment fails. Sometimes things don't react the way you expect them to. It's all part of the laser engraving game. Hopefully you can always minimize that as much as possible. I wanted to show you this specifically because these things do happen. They happen from time to time. And sometimes something like this, I mean, completely blows out your expected profit margin possibly on this. But I try never to get mad about that. It's always a learning experience and it makes it easier for the next time when you do run into issues like this. And in the end, it came out absolutely beautiful. All righty, gang, there it is. Disaster averted. Woohoo! We were able to fix everything. It looks good. I'm gonna turn this baby off now. Let's pull it out. Let's pull the board out. All right, so now I just gotta get my Odie's oil out, give this a little treatment, and uh, it'll be done. So in the end, the client was super happy. It came out even nicer than expected because of all the extra sanding I did to it. I did more sanding than the manufacturer did. I just think it's a good idea to let everyone know that, you know, these things happen. Mistakes will happen. As long as you work through them, finish the project, it's a great learning experience.